Hello. Before you start working on a project and build you, building your system, it's a good idea to set up a few templates. In this video, I'm going to go through project template. So if you're in different tab, go to construction tab, go to templates navigator, open projects if they're not already open. And now you've got option to either edit existing or create new. My preference is a1 size, that's the paper size you're going to model your system in. Uh, source at the bottom because that's how I uh, draw my schematics. But because I've already made some changes to it, I'm going to create a new one. And there's two options, either a right click and create, create new template. Which, if that happens, you go and select projects, name it and create. But this is not what I'm going to do because I will lose some, um, I will lose um, title block on, on this schematic just in case you wanted to use that functionality. So instead, I will copy existing source at the top and I change it to make it source at the bottom. To do that, select the one you want to copy, right click, copy, now right click again, paste. Now I'm going to change the name, so rename. That will be source at the bottom. And in brackets, custom. So I basically will edit that so the source will be at the bottom. Now double click and the project window will open. First section is projects. Leave it blank unless you want to make some comments, but there's no need. Schematic. This is the title block. Uh, you will see it in action in a different video, um, but that's why I copied the existing. Drawing, this is where the most important settings need to be uh, done. As you can see, drawing size is A1. I'll leave it as it is. Connection settings, this is where I'm changing the connection settings. So my source will be at the bottom of the drawing. This is my preference. Grid settings, leave the default, that's good. Font, if you're precious about it, change it to whatever you like. View, uh, you do want to uh, show errors and, and warnings. Uh, and usually keep the note icons and printouts blank. Default symbols, you can change them, but I don't because I create my schematics separately in AutoCAD or Revit. Uh, color configuration, the default is good, so I'm not going to change it. Annotation. This is where you want to do a few changes. Um, I'm going to change cable and bus bar instead of automatic. I want the annotation to be uh, vertical, so it goes along with the cable and along with the bus bar. Um, there's two columns, ID and name. I usually use ID only, sometimes use name in distribution boards. Uh, but if you're going to change them, change them so they are the same. It makes sense. And also a final circle load. I'm going to change it to a vertical. Okay, that's a vertical. Power factor correction, I will change it to horizontal. I forgot about the annotation display results to, to reset to horizontal, that, that is a preferred. Now we're gonna go to component numbering. This is quite important. The reason being, let me just show you something. If you work in a project um, and editing a circuit, this is the window you're gonna see and which is divided uh, into three sections. First, this is all a circuit, one single circuit, divided into general information about circuit. Then you got cable, so the circuit have a cable. As you can see, there is a prefix, prefix CBL, which sound, uh, signifies cable, but it's not obvious to everyone, especially to people who never used the software before. And then the third part is okay, is the load itself. So the circuit is made up of parts. 
one part is general information about the circuit then you've got cable and then you've got load so just to make it a bit more obvious you want to change this and i'm going to show you how so what you want to do is go into lighting cable and subnet cable and just leave them blank so delete them delete this and i want to add numbering method to the drawings so in the body i'm gonna put ten thousand one and four zeros and increment will be one thousand the reason is because when i do my schematic drawings i number them in a sequence let's say my incoming supply will be ten thousand and i'm using thousands uh, of series to number the circuits so in this case for example my 22,000 series is a life safety circuit then i've got standard lighting and power distribution boards which are 41,000, and and then i have another riser of standard uh, lighting power these boards um, i will name them 51,000. then i will have some mechanical supply they are 35,000. and fed off that you've got 35,200, 300 400 so it kind of is a very neat way of um, numbering that's that's my preference so if you set uh, the body and increment as I showed you you will achieve something similar it's not exactly you will have to manually update but it will be similar it will help you the next one you want to remove in loads you want to remove final circuit load this is what I've been showing you before and the final circuit motor and you can leave that ah, in conductors you also want to change final circuit cable into basically cable that will be very obvious what that is okay what else you want to do in here for final circuit load you want to include the way phase and connected from likewise for the motto and for final circuit cable you want to include final circuits reference And that's it. That should be it. And the reason why, let me show you as well. So now, for example, this is on the right hand side of our settings for the component numbering. On the left hand side, you will have this final circuit dialogue when you're actually editing and working the project. So if you change that um, final circuit, circuit into uh, prefix into cable that name will appear in here and we immediately will know that this subsection refers to a cable because it's very obvious in a load i'm going to put load and then immediately i will see uh, this is a subsection of a load and then the final circuit uh, final circuit i left it blank yeah that's correct that's all it is now let's go to the next one which is logo uh, initially you will have the, the standard Trimble logo if you follow the previous video you've already set your own logo in application settings in the home tab so you can you can just click revert to default and you will have your own new logo or you can choose new logo now let's go to calculations um you want to leave them all unticked minimal cable sizes makes sense to change it although you rarely will use automatic cable selections that's a, uh, my advice anyway you will never run lighting in one mil 
So I'm going to select 1.5 heating and power. That will be typically 2.5 mil cable, if not four. If it's on 16 amp breaker, it will be 2.5. Cooking appliance, well, depends. If this is a hob, you probably will go six or 10 mil. I select six mil. Motor heater is typically three kilowatts on 2.5 mil radio circuit, protected by 16 amp breaker. Flow warming possibly could be on 1.5 mil, but because it's a power circuit, I will typically have it protected by 16 amp breaker, as therefore I will go for 2.5. Storage space heating, that's definitely minimum 2.5, if not 4, I'll leave it 2.5. Sockets, sockets will be 2.5. Electric shower, it will be 10 mil. Fixed equipment, that's, uh, that means is power, so it's definitely not 1.5, I select 2.5. Motors, um, I would say the minimum size for the motor uh, would be 2.5. It most likely more depends what motor. Same likewise for a motor with starter. Strict lighting, I never use strict lighting, but we'll definitely never do strict lighting in 1.5. You will have issues with uh, ZS and volt drop. So yeah, that's may, may need to go 4 mil minimum, but I leave it 2.5. And likewise, the lighting column, sub mains. When I construct my model, I will have a file amp panel, for example, that, um, annotated as a sub main. So that will most likely be running 2.5 mil cable. So that's, uh, so that's probably very unique because all other supplies would be bigger than that. That's okay. Uh, maximum CPC sizes. Keep that as unlimited. Selectivity settings, which is the old discrimination. Um, what is set by default, minimum and maximum, uh, upstream downstream, is, as you can see on the graph, the worst case uh, scenario. Uh, good practice maybe to leave it like this, so you, you definitely will pick up all the errors. But if you want to allow yourself a bit more uh, spare a bit, a bit more leeway select nominal and therefore uh, there is a gap bigger gap between the curves it gives you a bit more leeway of uh, working with if you've got a lot of errors and there's not much you can do about it and the consultant is very insistent and not understanding i would then change it to nominal diversity I'm going to leave it as it is because I use uh, I set up diversity completely a different way. Uh, thresholds leave it as 100%. Switching scenarios this is very useful but pointless in setting up in the template. This is project based setting. Cable length allowance I would leave it zero. This is basically adding let's say if I put 10, 10 and percentage that will add 10% to every single cable length I've stated. So if I if I decided that that particular circuit is 50 uh, meters, the program will add 10% and calculate. Because when I uh, set up my cable lengths, I've already have some extra on top allowance. So I don't want to add to it e even more. So that's therefore I would advise to keep it as zero. Protective devices, this could be useful if you have uh, preferred manufacturers. My preferred manufacturers would be Eaton and Schneider, so I'm going to add them. And OK. Overload adjustments, set it to maximum. Reports, if you want full project file path in the report, then select I don't. That's it. Save. So project settings are done once you press saved and you can close the editor thank you for watching